Hello once again, Jose Rodriguez here. Um, many, many years ago, probably around six, seven years ago is when I started to experiment with Canon sponge type cartridges. Back then, they were CLI 8s for the uh, Pro 9000 and Pro 9000 Mark II. And we were devising ways to reliably refilling these cartridges so that they provide us with the correct ink flow. The last thing we wanted was ink starvation to occur. Now, when we were buying, either buying on eBay or from other people who had empties like these, or using our own cartridges, they had to be processed a certain way. But there were different approaches to this. And today, we have mastered the process. Let me just give a plug to Rick Johnson. He buys tons of these from I don't know what, what his sources are, but he will process them, meaning he will remove the factory ball located here and then drill the opening to a 532nd inch diameter hole that will then support a plug such as this. And then he will proceed to flush the cartridge sponge. Now, here we have a cartridge that came to me in this condition. Basically, it was used till it was empty, and it was never protected. So that sponge is completely dried up. It has ink in it, but it is now dried. So every, every liquid portion of that ink it has now evaporated. So can we refill this cartridge in this condition? Well, back in the day, we used to do that. Yeah. We would take the cartridge after we modify it. We would have the plug in it. And literally, we would turn it upside down and just add a couple of little drops of ink. In this case, it was uh, light gray ink to that. Let it permeate inside. Put a clip on it. Such as this. And then go ahead and add ink into the liquid chamber. We will watch the sponge, have it absorb the ink. And as you can see, it doesn't really go all the way to the top. Anyway, we would allow the sponge to saturate. You will see the ink levels drop here as ink is being transported over to the sponge side. There's a little tiny hole underneath here that allows the ink to permeate the sponge. This ink is entering on the lower level. You see that that is actually two layers and it would then rise to the top and because we basically opened up this chamber, it's going to fill all the way to the top in this case. That's what happens when you are performing this operation. There was no way to keep it from, a, you know, keeping that original OEM look. It will fill that sponge to the top. But you do not want it to go beyond that to that vent area. That vent area is right here underneath here. This is the vent that you open up when you remove that tab initially. Now let me show you one that is full. You will see that right above that sponge, you see how the sponge is saturated to the top? It is clear. This upper section here, that is a serpentine vent, it is clear. It is not loaded with ink. That would prevent ink flow. So today, what we do is we'll proceed to flush this. After we have drilled the top and tested the plug, we will run Windex. You can add a little extra ammonia to it. It will clean that ink right out. And then once it is now nice and blue, because Windex is kind of blue, you run water and then distill water after the sponge is spanky white. This one is not that white, but it is white enough. It's an old yellow card. There you go. You can see it now. It is white and then let it dry. You can use whatever method you want to use to increase the drying rate because you have to get them down to about 13.6 grams, give or take a tiny little bit. So people will use a toaster oven at very low temperatures. 
People will use a food desiccator. People will use all kinds of all kinds of methods to bring your cartridge down to the proper weight. Once you achieve that, you put one of those clips on, and you're ready to refill. Since the sponge was flushed, there is no need to prime that port. You would only do that seven years ago if you knew nothing about flushing cartridges. What? Flushing a cartridge? Why? Let me use the ink that's left over. Well, people will literally add a little bit of ink there that would wet that port, put the clip on it, and then just add ink on the so-called liquid chamber. All right, so let's go to our actual cartridge we're trying to refill now. And I'll just choose this one here. So this is already flushed. All we need to do is put a clip here and remove our plug. We will then reset the chip and add ink. As you add ink, you will see it permeate the sponge. It's going to begin to flow across that sponge. As you transport ink from the liquid side to the sponge side, the levels will begin to drop. Wait a little while. Let it adjust itself. Add more ink. You want to go a little higher than that. I could add a little bit more ink, but you want it to reach maybe almost touching the plug. You see the plug protruding through the top? Maybe the ink can touch that plug. That's about 80% capacity. Put the plug on it. Let it sit. It's going to adjust. As ink from here with the plug attached permeates the sponge, you're going to create a, a, a sort of a certain vacuum level. It's, there's a lot of hydraulics going on here. So you're going to allow that cartridge to balance itself. That's all you have to do. Once it is balanced, if the ink has dropped more, you can add a few more drops of ink, put the plug back on it, and let it sit. Now, if you have never done this before, and you want to make sure that your cartridge is actually flowing enough to feed whatever demand your image requires for a particular color, you run this test. You get a cup or a can, whatever you don't care about getting dirty. Remove the clip and just hold it. It is full of ink. You hold it over the cup. With the plug installed, ink should not dribble out. If it dribbles out, your plug is not sealing. Simple as that. It should not dribble. Remove the plug. Now it should drop, 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 drop. You'll see the levels dropping. Well, don't waste your ink. Right now, you already established. After it drips four or five times, that's plenty. You know that the cartridge is flowing ink correctly. Put the plug back on it. Put the clip back on it. And then you can put it aside or top it back up if you want to, to about this level, just underneath the plug. Okay? And then comes the important part. How do you refill this? At what point do you refill it? You don't want to wait until the cartridge is empty like this one was. This one was allowed to go empty. You, you notice how the top is lighter? That's air. That's air in there. And you cannot displace that air. It is trapped inside that, that crazy um, maze of fibers is some dried ink and some trapped air. And the air will not be pushed out simply by refilling. So what you gotta do is prevent this from happening. And the way you do that is to never allow the cartridge to even reach low. Now, what do I suggest? You know, what I'm, you know what's coming. Two sets of cartridges. One reset and filled inside your printer. Another set reset and filled on one of these holders just like that and that sits waiting you are printing 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 and you keep track of your ink level indicators remember you are resetting your chips to full every time you fill a cartridge so once that chip you see it almost reaching low switch all eight of them with the other eight and then put them on a holder. You will have your clips attached, put them on a holder. 
Now, not tonight, not tomorrow maybe, but when you have time, reset all of them and top them all off. They will all be at different levels. But the important thing is not one of them will have this condition. Oh, this condition where there's no ink in the liquid chamber. Okay, not one of them. All of your sponges will look like this. Full with no air. And you do that every single time. If you do not do that, you get a little bit of air because you waited past low. It hit low and you say, oh, I'll print another one. No, now you are adding air into the sponge. As ink is being drawn out, there's no more ink to replenish the sponge. Ink is not air. Air is air. You don't have any more ink. Now you're going to inject air inside that sponge. That's going to add the next time you do that again, now you got twice the amount of air. The next time you do that again, you got three times the amount of air. Every time you add air, what happens? You can only add so much ink. And there's not enough ink in that sponge to be able to print something requiring a lot of ink density. Something solid, bright red. You will have streaks. The tank will, the cartridge will tank out when it tries to produce that red. Yellow and magenta is just going to go, eh. okay? It cannot deliver the amount of ink you require because of all that air. So the practice is always fill before the low warning and fill all of them at once, exchange them all at once, and then later on reset and top them off and put them on a holder and wait until you need to replace all 10. Now, why would we do that? Another reason, very important reason, is that you have eight colors, but they're not all used at the same rate, at drastically different rates, especially your grays. So eventually, if you're just doing one cartridge at a time, every time you remove, just even remove a cartridge from the printer and put it back in, you just interrupted that connection to the chip it will run a what? A purge cycle. All eight of them will lose ink. If you do one at a time, and you'll be then doing it like every week or so. So in a matter of eight weeks, you will run eight purge cycles. That's a lot of ink wasted. If you just exchange every one of them, you no longer have those unequal levels. You start again from full. And it'll start dropping, but you'll have a ton of time before you have to actually exchange that set again. If you don't do that, you'll be exchanging sets. It's not, not sets, single inks. You'll be exchanging single cartridges every few days. It's going to drive you absolutely nuts. Especially the one that was almost near low will now be low because you had to do a global purge cycle. Why does it do that? See, I'm going to give you information here that no one will give you. Why does it run a purge cycle? Is it necessary? Yes, it is. Remember, where, where is the printhead when you are able to exchange cartridges? It's in the middle, floating above air. It's not locked and parked on the purge unit. It is floating in the middle of your travel. What's underneath it? Air. Then you go and you remove a cartridge. You just opened up a deluge. It could actually drip ink. It could actually suck air right in. If it drips some ink, it will actually suck air into the printhead. And it has to be purged. That's why it runs a global purge cycle. Whether you did one exchange or eight of them. So if you do all eight at once, you start up at full again. Maybe in two months, you'll be changing that set again. Maybe longer. It depends how much you print. Okay? In three months, let's just say one perch cycle. Whereas normally in three months, you'll be running probably 16 perch cycles. Exchanging a single cart all the way. Trust me on that. Okay? I am not BSing you. This is something I learned in years and years of experience with these types of cartridges. Let's jump over to the bladder type cartridges, such as these, the so-called PGI family, 
Those were CLI family. These are PGI. They have a plate right here. Okay, and they control how much pressure is applied to the bladder. There is a bladder, a bag inside this cartridge. And you simply just remove this after you reset it and dribble ink. Now, there are adapters that Rudy Hallamum has that allow you to attach them and actually forcibly inject, not forcibly, but, you know, directly inject ink in. You're going to just simply add ink until it weighs 32 grams. You put it on a scale, you dribble the ink in, it weighs 32 grams, you give it a squeeze like that to expel any kind of air bubbles, put the clip on it, and put it aside. I have 10 of them right here waiting to be installed on my Pro 10. Really not much to do. This is so simple. It's all, almost dummy proof. The Pro 10 cartridges, you can run them until they're empty. There's no need to worry about, oh, the low warning, this and that. That's only for sponge type cartridges. These can be allowed to go empty. I never do that. I always fill them before that. And again, flip it upside down, remove the clip, put it on a scale, and begin to fill drop by drop. It will just be absorbed. Now, if you buy some cartridges from eBay, those are a bear to refill because as long as these were yours and they were maintained in a wet condition, meaning this sponge was wet all the time, the bag will be in the contracted position and it will just accept ink and it will expand. The cartridges you buy unprotected without a clip from eBay because people have a tendency to throw these out, these little clips, the bag will be expanded and you will need to have an adapter such as this from Rudy Hallamum. You attach the syringe and you suck back and it will collapse the bag and now you can then fill it up easily. So you have to remove all that air. If you try to do the dribble method, it's going to take you like a half hour. You have to dribble, 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 a couple of drops, and then squeeze. You'll get lots of foam coming out. Another couple of drops, you'll squeeze again. Another bunch of foam comes out. You'll have to blot it. Forget it. It's a nightmare. So after that, once you've used it or refilled it successfully one time, you don't have to worry about that. The next time that you need to refill it, it will accept the ink readily. All right? And that is it. Refilling is not a guaranteed process. You do it at your own risk. If you do it correctly, it will be fine. You will have sufficient ink flow to handle any job you throw at it. Okay? But if you do not do it correctly, you're going to then suffer from either ink starvation, especially with the Pro 100 and Pro 200 cartridges, but, you know, with the others that have an internal bag, as long as you get that ink in there correctly and then you bring it up to 32 grams weight and expel any air that you may have aspirated in there, put the clip on it, they're ready to go. They are very reliable. There is no modification involved. So you have not altered any of the so-called working capabilities of the cartridge. You have indeed changed the capabilities of the cartridge when you perform this one if you drill that hole that's it you've changed the hydraulics now there are some much more involved methods of vacuum refilling your cartridges which allow you to go empty and then you fill your cartridges from underneath using a vacuum system uh, that works but it's a lot more involved the easiest method is to simply have a process cartridge such as this with a plug and then one that you can actually see through which is the greatest thing ever because now you can keep track of how well your sponge is saturated or if you messed up and you went beyond low you may eventually start seeing some airing here don't do it again don't do it again eventually you will dissipate that air but just don't do it again because it just keeps adding on on top of each other but it will take about two or three refills to possibly remove some of that air that may have been trapped if you messed up once, let's just say. You just cannot be messing up constantly. You'll have to reflush your cartridges at some point. All right, that is it for now. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, 
Happy printing, everyone. Bye-bye.